what up, man? It's your boy Chris Unbiased back with another blog. Yo, make sure you hit that like, subscribe button, man. Share this video. Do all that stuff, man. I appreciate all the support. Can we have a real discussion about this Smack Volume 6? Let's just, let's just have a real discussion, man. It's hard to really judge battles when you only can watch them one time and everything. It's hard to give like a clear, concise you know, view of how you how you see the event, you know what I'm saying, when you're just watching it real time. But, you know, now that I had time to process a lot of stuff, I want to just talk about some of the extra stuff that I saw in the whole event. Now, first of all, uh, what do we think about the event as a whole? I'm going to be real with you. I really didn't think it was that great of an event, to be honest with you. On scale to 1 to 10, I put this event at a 6 put this event at a six overall i don't feel like really when it when these battles drop on the app it's trying to have a lot of replay value at all i may go back and watch goods and geechee a few times i may go watch go back and watch danny and ill will other than that i'm probably not gonna watch these battles anymore i'm just being honest with you it's not necessarily smack's fault i mean all he has to do is book the battles and you know the battle it's up to the ballers to show up so i can't really say it's his fault but he does have a little culpability in this whole situation because URL does way too many events. Did, did we not just see that Born Legacy 11 is like next weekend or something like that or two weeks from now? I think it's next weekend. Um, that's just way too soon, bro. It's like no buildup, no trailer, no buildup, no nothing. It's like no storylines, no anything. And I think with them, with them charging people $7.99 for this app, it's like they must have content. I guess that's what they feeling like. Yo, if we don't have, if we don't figure out a way to have battles every weekend or every other weekend, maybe people won't even subscribe no more. And they just keep churning out and churning out battles after battles after battles. And you pop up one day and they tell you, yo, this battle is next weekend. It's no build up, no trailer, no nothing. I'm, I mean, I missed a day when you used to actually watch a trailer where a dude actually you know, talk this shit, URL, edit it real good. The other dude talk this shit, edit it real good, and you put it all together. I think Swamp and Sway Seva could have a crazy trailer, but they don't even have one for, for the event next week. Not, not nothing sick or whatever. So I feel like that's definitely missing. I don't know if it's the app making them do so many battles. I don't know if it's Caffeine telling you we need you to do so many battles. Whatever it is, it's definitely too many battles. That can also have a have an effect on your preparation. You know what I'm saying? Like we just saw Ars battle official. So if Ars wouldn't have done well today or yesterday versus Jerry West, he would have battled official, Bill Collector, and Jerry West all in what, a couple months? You know, that's a lot on a battle. And they're not going to, even though it's on a battle to accept the battle, they're not going to turn down the money. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, they're going to take the money and then hope that they can prepare. And I think that that's a... Um, it go hand in hand, man. It's some of the ballers fought, and some of the leagues fought the whole nine. So that's what I think of the event. Um, I wasn't really feeling the setting. I'm going to be real with you. I know Smack is probably trying to do like this whole corner thing where we on the corner. But I don't like, can someone help me understand this? I don't understand how they're COVID testing everybody, right? They're COVID testing everybody. But they're not allowing no crowd around the ballers. I don't I don't really get it. And I know just because you get COVID tested and you're negative doesn't actually mean you're negative. Maybe you just are, are asymptomatic or maybe it just you just fall in this loophole of where you could be positive, but right now you're testing negative. I get it. I get it. I get it. I don't think the ballers really care. When I watch some of these interviews with Hip Hop is Real, 15 Minutes of Fame, the ballers do not have masks on. It's, it's people coming up to them in the interview, shaking their hands, saying what's up to them. They just keeping it moving, man. They don't really, they not, they interacting with each other inside this bubble without a mask. But then when you turn the cameras on, it's like, yo, make sure you keep your distance. That tells me right there that caffeine is controlling it. Caffeine is saying, you know what? When the lights and cameras are on, we're going to appear that we're social distancing, doing everything we need to do for California regulations. Even though maybe when the cameras is off, niggas is shaking hands, buddy, buddy, no mask, whatever. And... It just lets you know how much caffeine is controlling battle rap, bro. Especially from a URL standpoint. No matter what URL says in terms of like, you know, we didn't, you know, I know it's a big deal about selling out to the culture and doing, you know, selling, selling, selling the culture to caffeine. Let's be real, caffeine is, it's not black owned at all, and these people are pretty much controlling. A lot of what goes on with these, with these URL events, whether we like it or not. And I feel like it's very evident 
in these battles because we need the crowd back. I got to keep it a buck. We definitely need the crowd back. You know, at first it was like, oh, it's too much gas and it's too much these one off at school. But, bruh, this shit right here is not what's up, bruh. It is not what's up. At least if you could bring the crowd closer, you can make it like a volume, a real volume. But, come on, having them like 10, 15 feet across the street, like that shit is not, that shit is not a good look at all. It's not a good look at all. So, I feel like that's that's one of the things that's really hurt hurt the event as well. It's just no crowd. Let me go through the battles real quick one more time. I'm going to start with um, K-Shine and Pat Stay because I didn't upload that recap. Uh, Pat Stay obviously lost his battle. We don't need a sugarcoat. He lost it. I can't even think of a round to give Pat Stay. I think he got 30 in my opinion. When I look at um, his interview, I mean, he wasn't making excuses. He was kind of explaining how he didn't prepare. You know, he prepared at the last minute and all this kind of stuff. Then Pat Stay got on like some neon orange pants. Almost like the nigga was on his way to the beach or something. You want to battle or go to the beach? I mean, you got to make up your mind, my nigga. You want to battle or go to the beach? I knew Pat Stay was going to lose his battle, just like I predicted. One of the few predictions I seem to get right. But I knew, to me, Pat Stay needs a crowd. And when I look at him like with no crowd and just spitting bars... He has timely bars and he has effective bars, but he's not bar heavy to me. And I didn't feel like he could stand up toe to toe and out bar K Shine. It wasn't a great K Shine either. Like this was one of the lower K Shine performance. I really did like his second round though, but this was one of the lower K Shine performances. It was beatable, but I definitely felt like I knew Pat Stay was gonna come with short jokes, bro. I knew he was gonna come with. He started off, you know, with the whole ruler and trying to measure K Shine. Too much kiki and high high and joking and telling you that yo that's a good round and you know you did good. Too much freestyle. That is Pat Stay to a T. And when he said in his interview that he gets away with it and wins, so he kind of felt like, you know, why switch it up? Why, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. It wasn't gonna work with K Shine. The problem, the reason why Pat Stay can be the way Pat Stay is and still beat people is because people take the wrong angle with Pat Stay every time. A URL type battler, minority African American battle pass state they play the race card too much. Dad, yo, dad, chill, dad. These niggas is my fam lately. Boy, if you don't shut the fuck up and go and give your sister some dick and bring me some grandbabies. Go watch Verb versus Pat Stay on RBE. As lyrical as Verb is, he took the easy way out. He did a whole bunch of race jokes. I mean not race jokes, but a whole bunch of race bars. And you're not gonna really beat Pat Stay that way. It's an angle that even black people don't even really appreciate anymore. It's like, yo, we really tired of hearing this. What you going to say to, to, to Pat Stay and Sharon every time you battle them that they're white? It's like, give us, and even Big K, give us something more than that. And a lot of people try that. K-Shine didn't really do that. And I felt like if you eliminate that, you can beat Pat Stay in my opinion. So that's how I feel about that battle. B-Dot and Chilla Jones, I really thought this was going to be like a lyrical battle. You know what I'm saying? Like super crazy. I know I respect B Dot and his growth. You know what I'm from where he was prior to me blogging to where he is now. I felt like this battle shifted when um, Chilla Jones started talking about B Dot's uh, baby mom and his marriage or not uh, ex ex wife or whatever his his failed marriage. If you really look at B Dot, bro, it really looked like that affected him. That really affected him a lot. The new new angle was terrible. It was terrible, bro. Like having her, I thought she was gonna spit some bars or say something. I didn't really know what she was gonna do, but I kind of thought B Dot might throw us some lines and she'll spit some bars just to come out and say one or two bars. I think it made Nunu look bad too, to be honest with you, because we haven't seen Nunu at these URL events at all. Almost to the point where I was even wondering if not not wondering if she was fucking with them because I still see her promoting them on Instagram, but just like. If she even was in the battle rap anymore. We don't see her at these events. Then for you to really come, and it's like, oh, we got a, you know, Nunu, you know, we got a special guest in the building, Nunu Nails, you got Surf and Jay Black talking about that. And then for them to get to that battle and her to say, yo, I got a little biasness for B Dot. I'm not feeling what Chilla said versus prep. I'm like, okay, I mean, at least she being honest. That's what I was thinking. At least she being honest. I was thinking it was petty that she held holding on to this for so long. It's just a battle rap bar. But for you to be a prop, it's like, yo, you really just flew out to Cali to be part of B Dots. It's almost like you ain't even been coming to these events. You came all the way out here 
which I thought you was just fucking with the whole battles. Like, all the battles, you really came out here because you part of B-Dot's round, and it was, like, unnecessary. It was stupid. It ain't even something I would have expected from B-Dot, to be honest with you. It was, like, a terrible angle. To, and um, it failed a lot. Like, I mean, Chilla Jones was kind of looking like, really, my nigga, like, this is what we doing? Like, Nunu Nails, you, you brought her out here. And I think it just was terrible on his part. And, um... You know, I know he admitted defeat, so salute to him for at least admitting that he lost. But uh, he definitely did lose. Lose. I think I had him win in the first round. He lost the last two, and I think he lost champion of the year on that. I don't see no way he wins champion of the year now after that battle. So I'll do a champion of the year blog next. But that's why I see that. Um, what else we got? We got Danny Myers and Ill Will. That battle honestly can go either way. I did have Danny Myers winning the battle at first. I'm not going to lie. Before I recorded my blog, I had Ill Will winning the battle. Now I was thinking about it on it, you know, thinking about it and replaying some of the notes I wrote down. I was like, yo, I really think Danny might have won this battle. But I do realize it can go either way. So I'm not mad if somebody picked Ill Will. I'm still going with Danny Myers right now. Maybe I'll watch it when it drops on the app and I'll feel a little differently. Um... I felt like Ill Will's material could have been better. Danny's material could have been better, if I'm being honest with you. Danny material, Danny battling too much. He need to chill out, to be honest with you. But uh, both their material could have been better. But Danny did enough to just say, look, all y'all thought I was going to get killed by Ill Will. I arguably, arguably beat him. And, you know, now look at me now kind of thing. So he has that ability to say that. Arsenal and Jerry West, um, this is a... This is a Kind of a clear loss on Jerry West's part. You know what I'm saying? I don't really have him winning this battle at all. I think Arsenal was not the great, not the best Arsenal either. Once again, not the best Arsenal at all. But Arsenal has a way to rap really well. You know what I'm saying? He can, he can, Arsenal can rap really well, control his breathing, do all the things necessary. And he got all the mannerism to appear like he's really doing his thing. He has some good stuff here and there. Jerry West had some good stuff here and there. I hated the prop Jerry West did with the phone call, and I hated that. I didn't like it at all. I, I thought it definitely didn't hit. I appreciate that Jerry West is willing to try stuff. Like, he did the little three thing with, with uh, Danny Myers, I think, in a previous battle. I like that he's willing to try stuff um, with sound effects in the room. Go back to the Gluezy battle. It got sound effects. This is just one of them that didn't hit. It didn't hit, in my opinion, at all. So... But, uh, you know, salute to Jerry West, though. I feel like this has been an incredible year for Jerry West. I can't front. Like, it's not a bad thing to lose to Arsenal. He's on Mount Rushmore for a reason. And um, other than that, it doesn't really take away from his year to me. I feel like he's had an incredible year. So, salute to him for that. Um, who else? What else did we have on the card? Um, Geechee Gotti and Goods. This is a preference battle. It's like, do you want the grown man talk with the I got credit and you still in the street or I'm I'm making legal money now and my cologne is more expensive than all your everything you got on? Or you like the street stuff that Geechee Gotti said. I think Goods, even though he grown man them in the second round, he kept kind of going with that in the third. That really was his angle throughout a lot of the battle. So as much as we say, oh, Geechee Gotti only talks about the same thing, Goods was kind of talking about the same kind of angle as well. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more diversity from even both of them, to be honest with you, with trying like new stuff. I think Goods gained the most from the battle, though, to be honest with you, because a lot of people kind of looked at Goods and thought maybe he wasn't that great, crazy versus Tay Rock. Maybe he wasn't that crazy in some of his other battles. And now we see what happens when the dude can just rap. You know what I'm saying? I think he... Gain something from that. He had the best bar of the battle to me when he said, um, though I get paid so much, like me and Smack is in a partnership. That was crazy to me. I was fucking with that. So heavy, that was crazy. And, um, you know, Geechee got it. I don't think Geechee, Geechee said he get paid more than Goods. I highly doubt that just because I be knowing some of these contracts behind the scenes. Goods always been one of the highest paid, probably right under Hitman, to be honest with you, right under Hitman. Probably... If not, that's as high, if not higher than Arsenal. So you probably think you got like Hitman and maybe like Conceited and maybe Clips, like the Wild and Out crew. You got to put Goods like right under that. I mean, other than Lux and Mook, then you come to like a Goods and whatever. So I don't, it's for, for you to be paid more than Goods is hard for me to believe, especially for all the stuff that, that Goods has done. 
he has one of the highest caffeine deals on caffeine as well compared to like other people. Like the way he know, he knows his worth, bro, and that's why like he don't take battles. He could have probably Goods could probably be making twenty thousand dollars a battle for a lot of battles and making it great money throughout the year if he battled three four times. He'll turn down he'll turn down twenty thousand dollars. Like no, nah, I don't really want to take this battle right now. So he's doing well outside of that. And one thing I can say about Goods, he really don't be fronting in a lot of stuff he say. Like, I didn't been to his crib. I didn't rode around with him in the car. We didn't went out to eat before. We didn't really just kicked it. You know what I'm saying? The nigga really is living a good life. So it's not like some of these other guys where I didn't interview them and pull up and these niggas ain't even got the, got the fucking electricity on. I got to interview, interview you outside because your lights are off. Like, this is like really happened to me. But you'll get in a battle and then talk about how you making racks on top of racks. And it's like, come on, my nigga. Like, that's not really what's going on. Goods is one of these people that that are that is living that life. But I thought Geechee was actually good. I like some of the shit Geechee said. He was barking on Goods. One of the good qualities Goods have, he can seem very... This is like a contradiction I'm about to say. Because I'm about to say he can seem very undeterred by what you say. But then he threw the thing in the hollow battle and punched gems. But he can have a calmness about him where it's like nothing you say really matters. It's like it just deflects off me kind of thing. And that's a good quality. He's not one. It's a good quality, but sometimes he don't always show it because sometimes he will talk through your rounds like he did with Tay Rock and he'll throw you off. So maybe maybe I'm not completely right on that. But so, yeah, that's just my thoughts, man, on Smack Volume 6, man. Um, it's been a crazy year for Battle Rap, man. I'm definitely going to do probably a 2020 recap blog. I'm going to try to do one. I don't, I don't know. It's kind of hard to do shit without clips. I ain't going to even front. And um, But I'm going to try to see if I can put something together where I recap the whole year or whatever the case may be. Y'all let me know what y'all think of the card. Let me know what y'all rank it. What was y'all favorite battle of the card? Um, and what you, you know, do y'all... This this card really needed Easy Block and... and uh, and uh, T top, it it needed easy to block captain and T top definitely for sure, just to give it more of a street feel in a way or something like. I felt like that. Pro looking at all the battles, I really feel like that would have been the best battle on the card now. And I didn't think that going into it. I kind of thought like, oh, this might be kind of cool. Maybe you know it might be better if it was T top and Swamp. Now I'm like, yo, my nigga, we really needed that this battle. So the fact that it didn't happen is like it's kind of crazy, but. That's my thoughts, man. Subscribe to the channel. I'll let your boy.